Hi, did you know by 2245, the fifth state of matter is going to be digital bits and bytes. Physicists believe from 300 from years from now, 50% of Earth's mass is not going to be atoms. It's going to be digital bits. What are the implications today to understanding this? What is the impact of this going to be on having healthcare and artificial intelligence? Let's find out. Hi, this is Junaid, Neurocritical Care Stroke and Epilepsy Specialist, and today we're going to talk about the series that we're talking about, basically artificial intelligence in healthcare. One of the key issues with artificial intelligence is you need big data, and the availability of big data is going to be the most important crucial factor for developing better, faster, and more accurate predictions. That is the main job of artificial intelligence. And once the artificial intelligence can get enough data, that it can crunch all of that through CPU and GPU power, we're gonna see exponential rise and capability of these predictions to be correct. Not to mention the generative artificial intelligence that we're seeing with ChatGPT and we're seeing with Dolly. So therefore, not only we're gonna be actually having better predictions in terms of healthcare, but we're gonna be generating even more data through the basis of artificial intelligence. So where are this data coming from? Like we really need to understand this. And this explosion is not stopping. This is actually exponentially increasing. So this is not just a trend. This is not a fad. This is an exponentially increasing trend. And we're going to see that, that at some point in time, 50% of Earth's mass is going to be covered by it. So therefore, you need to understand that very deeply. And it has implications, believe it or not, or overall how you design your career because deciding wisely is important. It is as, as literally as artificial intelligence can predict the future, and that's the whole point of it. You have to be intelligent enough in predicting what pathway you're gonna take, because you need to see 20 years from now, 25 years from now, when you're gonna be my age, where you wanna sit. So therefore, make sure that you take these things into consideration when you're deciding which career path you're gonna choose. Now let's come back to the data. Now, now we are producing humongous amounts of data. Let me show you. If you look at this graphic, this amazes me every time, literally. Like in every minute, we're not talking about an hour, we're not talking about a day, we're not talking about a year. We're saying we are sending 15.2 million text messages. One minute, we're sending 210 million emails. We are streaming 694 million songs. It's crazy, it's mind boggling. 4.2 million searches on Google. These are not numbers in thousands. These are millions. And this is trend is not gonna go away. The amount of internet usage that we are doing and the amount of digital bits and bytes that are flowing through, it is mind boggling. And again, if you look at the last year's chart to this year's chart, you're gonna see an exponential increase and this is increasing further so. Right now, there are only 4.2 billion smartphones on the planet Earth in usage, and that is exponentially increasing. So more people are getting connected and more people are getting into this, you know, data creation business. And that's not just it. We have officially hit 8 billion human beings on the planet. So 8 billion human beings are now going to have smartphones, wearables, internet connections, and this is going to make for sure increase in both intensity and severity, right? Unfortunately, or fortunately, whatever you want to say it, this is not a trend or a fad. This is the reality. And we're going to have this exponential increase in data. As a matter of fact, I repeat, this exponential increase in data is going to be at some point in time, the fifth state of matter itself. We're going to change our physical reality. We're going to change the definitions of state of matter because of this. So this is that important to understand and digest. Now let's come to where are we actually, you know, understanding where the data for healthcare is coming. Now let's understand the data from healthcare. You're going to see that, you know, the zettabytes of data that we used to produce back in 2013 to 2020, it has increased by 2000 fold. This is ridiculous amount of data that we are producing in healthcare. And if you don't understand what a zettabyte is, let me show you. A zettabyte is 1000 petabytes. I mean, just to give you a context, just look at this chart. Generally, the computers, for example, your laptop is at 500 gigabytes to a one terabyte. One terabyte is 1000 terabytes is one petabyte. And 1000 petabytes is basically one zettabyte. And that is again, not stopping. 
And there's so many new sources of healthcare data that are being included. Let's just review them. I mean, medical imaging is a big one, but we're constantly creating more and more health information data from notes, progress notes, clinical notes, genomics, medical devices, lab data, you know, pairs data. We are actually producing so many clin clinical data, radiomics data, biometrics data, so many sources of data. As a matter of fact, as more and more health IoT, Internet of Things become norm, we're gonna see more and more data coming through. So not only that we have more individuals on the planet that are actually creating data, we are actually, that single individual is creating more data exponentially as well. I mean, we are looking at an explosion of devices from smart watches, pulse oximetry, uh, we are actually having body sensors ECG machines that used to take, you know, a room to actually conduct are now available as patches. We're seeing extremity sensors. We're seeing audiovisual input that is being recorded and analyzed. Believe it or not, we're seeing such a massive explosion of devices that is creating data and are connected that we're going to see a huge change in our prediction ability. And therefore, again, understanding this is extremely important in the future and creating a career path as well. The last thing I want to point out is that you really need to understand how you define big data. Big data has basically five we's. Number one is volume. It has to have humongous, magnificent, extraordinary amount of volume. It is data upon data. It's not 10 scans or 20 scans. It's 200,000 scans per day per minute. You need magnificent amount of volume for the big data to exist. More importantly, you need to have variety. You need male, female, you need to have different races, you need to have, you know, a significant amount of age distribution in terms of that big data. You need velocity. Not only that, that the data is coming, it is coming at a significant amount of speed. So therefore, that data one is crunched in because as, as you move along from the data origin to data analysis, you have seen that there's a significant amount of prediction changes can happen. So the faster you get to the prediction at the source of data in terms of time, in terms of longitudinal time, the better your prediction will be. So you need better velocity of data. And of course, if you have veracity, that data needs to be reliable. Because if that data is not reliable, if that male female tags are not there, we're gonna constantly get in trouble. And that's actually one of the things when we do clinical studies, that is the most important issue, that the reliability and the trust in the data itself. And of course, to really generate value, that all things needs to be in that area. All these five things, variety, volume, veracity, etc., truly brings in the value. And where is the data value? It is being able to churn it into prediction. And if you're not going to do that, why the hell are you collecting data itself? Clearly. Well, this was great. So we covered two C's. One is convergence and the second one is content. Creating massive amounts of data and then the new sensors and health IoT that is generating even more data. In the next lecture, we're going to discuss computation and how it is improving in both cost and decreasing in terms of power usage. So both of these things are going to be extremely important and how we are really laying down the new foundations of digital healthcare. And of course, in future, we're going to see connectivity, cost and code. Thank you so much.